The last time the name Tipo was on a Fiat, it was 1995, and since then we've had Bravas, Stilos and Bravos, but the Tipo name is back. And it's on this, Fiat's new Budget Family 5-door hatchback, and Budget, as we shall discover, is an important word for the Tipo. It's Fiat's new five-door family hatchback, but while natural rivals are the Ford Focus, the Vauxhall Astra and the Volkswagen Golf, its asking price means it also squares up against more value-orientated hatchbacks like the Skoda Rapid Spaceback. Inside, it's all conventionally and logically laid out. It's very easy to get comfortable thanks to a height adjustable steering wheel and driver's seat. And this is standard across all models on the Tipo range. Storage wise, well, the glove box is large enough for a large packet of crisps. The door bins just about fit a 1.5 litre bottle of water. However, the space under the armrest isn't particularly useful. There are a few scratchy plastics in some really notable areas, such as across the tops of the doors, on the glove box and on the centre console here. But this is not the thing that winds me up the most about this interior. That's something I shall explain a little bit later on. Fiat has thrown a lot of kit at the Tipo. The easy trim level gets Bluetooth, a DAB radio, air conditioning, electric mirrors and a space saver spare wheel. This range topping lounge version gets sat nav, a rear parking camera and parking sensors and 17 inch alloys. Now if you're thinking of buying a Tipo to cart around the family then you'll like the fact that the doors open nice and wide. Look at that, that's probably one of the best in the class. And there's ice fix points in both of the outer seats. For adults, well, it's a bit of good news, bad news really, because knee room is absolutely fine, but headroom is a little bit tight. Now I'm just over five foot 10 and there isn't a huge amount of room to spare. If you're nudging six foot, you're gonna be quite uncomfortable back here. However, you can slot your feet underneath the seat in front of you and slouch to give you some extra headroom. Now you can carry three people back here, just. There is a very small hump in the floor, which is good. And when you're here, it's quite comfortable. Again, headroom is even less than it is on the two outer seats, thanks to this uh, bit in the ceiling. But overall, you really wouldn't carry a third passenger back here very often. Practicality wise, well, there's a couple of pockets on the back of the seats, but there's no rear armrest or cup holders, which is a bit of a shame. Things do improve when we get round to the boot because there's 440 litres on offer, which is considerably more than the Ford Focus and the Seat Leon. The space is nice and square. You can make it larger with the 60-40 folding rear seats and they're quite straightforward to fold down. And once you've done that, you can load those extra large items in. What's not quite so nice, however, is the fact there's no clever little storage items, such as there's no movable boot floor, which means when you're Casting those heavy bags in, there's a bit of a drop down into the boot floor. And there is also a bit of a step from the floor to the back of the seat. However, there is a space saver spare wheel and that comes as standard on every single Tipo. Just as you'd expect, the engine lineup is simple. There's a 94 brake horsepower 1.4 petrol, 118 brake horsepower 1.4 turbo and 108 brake horsepower 1.6. Meanwhile, for diesel, there's a 94 brake horsepower 1.3 or 118 brake horsepower 1.6 with manual or dual clutch automatic gearboxes. Now, whilst the petrols are smooth, they're quite thirsty and costly to tax. Now, out of the diesels, this is the best one, the 120 horsepower. And this is a perfectly decent engine. Whilst it is quite noisy and rattly on the outside, on the inside, it's actually very quiet, it's very punchy, and there's lots of in-gear acceleration, which is great when you're on the motorway and having to overtake that slow-moving lorry. It's quite frugal too. Fiat claims 76 mpg and we managed a pretty good 56. And with this version pumping out 98 grams per kilometre of CO2, it's cheap to tax. Couple this with soft suspension and a pretty good ride even on this car's 17-inch alloys and the Tipo is surprisingly quiet and comfortable. However, that's where the good news stops because we now come on to the bad points of the Fiat Tipo and unfortunately there are quite a lot of them. 
let's start off with the interior. Now, if you're used to the Fiat 500 with its charming and quirky interior, then the Tipo is gonna come as a massive shock because just look at it there is an unrelenting use of black plastic. There's no interesting design flourishes in here whatsoever. It is dreary. There are also some really nasty plastics in here. Now, whilst I can overlook the plastics on tops of the doors and on the glove box, what I cannot overlook are these stalks. Now, whilst they look the same as the ones you find in a Fiat 500X, they most certainly are not the same plastic because they feel so fragile. They feel as though they're going to drop off at any moment. This particular car has done around three and a half thousand miles and already they feel as though they're on their last legs. It's a shame really because these stalks are in sharp contrast to some other quite good pieces of plastic in here such as the heater controls and they're taken straight out of an Alfa Romeo and they feel really robust and sturdy to use. There's also another problem in here, an infotainment screen. It is absolutely tiny. My mobile phone screen is larger than that and it's not me being picky or snooty having such a small screen means it's very difficult to use on the move but that's nothing compared to the controls now this gearbox has a really rubbery change action and if you change gears too quickly there's a tendency for this gearbox to to crunch between gears and don't think it's just a quirk of this particular car I've had it in another Tipo and then there's the steering look at the play in this in the wheel look in the dead ahead and nothing is happening. We're not changing direction at all. Turn to a corner and there's finally some reaction from the steering and even then it's lumpen and woolly. Cars like the Ford Focus and the Seat Leon really have this car beaten when it comes to cornering. But, and it's a big but, the Tipo is a cheap car. Now forget this 18 grand lounge model. You can have a Tipo on your drive from just under 13,000 pounds. Whatever way you look at it, that is a lot of car for the money. It's just a shame that there are no interesting design flourishes in here and some of the plastics are cheap, but I suppose you can't have your cake and eat it. Now this video has got you interested in the Fiat Tipo, then make sure you check out one of its rivals, the Skoda Rapid Spaceback, and you can do that by watching our video review. Watch our playlist for best family hatchbacks and press our logo to subscribe to our channel.